Hello, Elliot. <laughs> Long time no see. Yeah. yeah. Been seeing a lot of you lately. Yes, we're on tour together at this yeah. point. Again. Yeah. yeah. It's good times. Yeah. yeah. You're one of my favorite people to tour with. Likewise, my <laughs> man. <laughs> um, yeah, I had a blast the other night when we were uh, laughing it up in the lounge. Oh, jeez. Johnny and... Johnny's a fucking clown. Greg, yeah. 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 You get, get Johnny. It was a good time. Yeah. Had some time. wine. Some wine was... Yeah. Some fine wine was involved. Johnny likes to get classy. And then he gets all sloppy. Yeah. <laughs> Love that guy. <laughs> it was so good, though. It was it was choice. Um, yeah, so we're on a North American tour right now. Yeah. Um, Lovely Reno, Nevada tonight. Yes. Reno. Yeah, it's a little... Especial. Yeah. <laughs> a little dingy. A little dingy. Um, but, yeah. The club is cool. Sounds good in there. Yeah. We just checked. Uh, yeah. it sounds pretty good. And until you like get under like those rafters or whatever the top level right and then there's it kind of gets crazy some there. weirdness yeah but um yeah we had a really cool venue in, in Seattle the Crocodile Room that shit sounded sick yeah I watched there's, you side stage the whole time but dude like, it was like treated like the, the ceilings and the walls they were all treated with like multiple foot deep baffles so it was like the low end was super under control and it was like yeah yeah I was like, hey, it sounded pretty crushing out yeah. front too. Though. I was like, hit hey, record tonight, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on the desk or? On the desk, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, whatever after the after the tour, I'll see if there's something worth syncing up some video or whatever. But, yeah, yeah, sick. Yeah. Well, uh, you uh, you do sound stuff, right? Yeah, I uh, I started. My my father was keyboardist or whatever, so he always had like the mixing console, like the smaller like PV six channel ones with the fucking, uh, you know, growing up and shit. So I was yeah. I've I, I have always been around it, and uh, and then I started like getting into the audio stuff once I started wanting to record drums, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and he always had the keyboards with like the sequencers in them, like the uh, like old Korg stuff had like 16 channel step sequencer in it It'd be like yeah all in there writing stupid like stupid shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh yeah that was good and then like when we uh, I started working in studios assisting like in New York like in the early 90s mm -hmm. doing mostly like rap at that point yeah it was a yeah. scene yeah for sure <laughs> sick yeah <laughs> yeah what like, kind we, of cast did you get in there I was like Wu-Tang and fucking you know, the whole Rough Riders fucking DMX yes. fucking crew and yeah, it was like all those guys are icons now, but I was like assisting in those studios and just sleeping on the couch in there when I was like sixteen or something like that, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Just go into town and crash on the couch and they didn't pay much, but I would just sell weed like to the clients in there. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how I could like make it Yeah. Make viable. it work. Yeah, <laughs> but they had real gear in there, so I learned how to like fucking recall SSL consoles and calibrate tape machines and all that shit, which was awesome. That is sick. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's yeah. Cool. And you got a pretty sick studio. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's I'm, I, I've just had a gear buying addiction for a long time. You know, mm -hmm. so I basically just work and buy gear, and uh, I've amassed a bunch of gear, and. Um, but I, I don't really professionally mix because I, I have another company where I'm like mostly dedicating all my time to that because I can make more money doing that. But then, uh, yeah. but I have all the gear. So I tried to go in partners with the Gojira guys on a studio mm -hmm. and that, that turned out to be like not much of a money making endeavor. So I had all my gear sitting there and it really wasn't paying dividends. So I right. basically bowed out of that and now I just have like a wall of gear in my apartment. Yeah. Yeah, but I eventually I'd like as a as you know I'd like to mix records and shit like that, but I haven't uh, really done that in a long yeah. time. Yeah. Wow. But the car bomb stuff is like you know it's all pre pro. I'm doing all the pre pro and mixing and, and shit That's like sick. that. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you guys do no click, right? No click. Yeah. Zero no. Zero click. Zero click. No grid, motherfuckers. <laughs> Just raw. Gridless existence. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, if I'm if I'm just practicing by myself, I'll I don't throw on just a click. Usually, usually I like to practice to music. 
yeah. you know, whether that music is on a click or not, most most stuff is, you know. Mm -hmm. I'll go onto YouTube and just type in drumless, and all these tracks will come up, and I'll just play over that shit, or I'll play over like yeah. more sparse electronic stuff, like Aphex Twin, or you know, stuff like that, or Steve Reich stuff is yeah, yeah. super fun to blow over, you know, because yep. you can go in a thousand different directions, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's just like whatever mood you're in that day, you can kind of take it take it there or whatever but. yeah it's way better practicing to music than a click yeah it's yeah kind of soul sucking yeah um you gotta have you gotta be in a certain like mode where you're like all right i'm gonna file my taxes now kind yeah. of <laughs> mode you know i'm gonna manage my finances I'm yeah gonna yeah tidy up around the house it's that sort of thing where you're like yeah i'm doing doing cleanly work yeah. just to i kind of put in my hours like when i was younger and now i just want to make a musical statement as opposed yeah. to you know doing something te more technical or whatever you know yeah I feel yeah. you uh, the older I get the harder it is to kind of like try to maintain that that uh, level of like clarity and and, and also I mean like it's putting just on like, a slow click and fucking dropping beats out and like trying to maintain the internal clock and all that shit like I went through that stuff so it's not like I never never did that but um yeah, yeah. When I was growing up playing in bands, there was it, playing metal. There wasn't it, click wasn't a thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, no. it, 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 like yeah. early two thousands, I think is when it. Yeah, it kind of popped off. Yeah. Thing. Laptops were powerful enough to run the shows and all that stuff, and kind of swapped over. It's a more convenience thing for the light tying all the lighting together and all that type of stuff, which is mm -hmm. really nice. But um, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I feel like even playing to click, a lot of times we're like repeating patterns and although I feel that's really good it, it can also that everything good comes with like a, a, a bad thing that you need to be aware of and the thing that I'm aware of now is that like okay the more that I do that the less I become prone to the more I become prone to uh, repeating patterns and not like hearing how things could be linear and evolve and continue to keep evolving over like every measure yet there's still something right that is the same each well the way you play to the grid is fucking great because it's like there's the feel over the grid so I, that's I, that's probably not ignoring i mean you have to pay attention obviously but it's more of yeah. a background thought than yeah I mean, plus the the tunes are just like you know when you're playing that complicated over the grid it's more of you know you're not playing to a click like the click is playing to you <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, kind of sort of yeah yeah it's I, I definitely find myself at times like listening and zeroing and yeah it used to be more of a thing um, trying to make it disappear no just like oh i can't it's so loud i couldn't make it disappear oh okay it's so loud in my ears. But yeah because uh, uh tosin and javier they don't really have that much click in right. their ears. Tosin has like his shit like halfway out, so right. like even when it's going, sometimes you won't like yeah. hear it. Yeah, you know, they don't need it as much as we do. Yeah, they. Or, yeah. True, but it also means that I'm the the sole person that's responsible. Right, right. For it. And yeah. it, it, at the end of the day, it makes sense because if I get off from the click, everyone's fucked. But if they get off, I can usually yeah adjust. Fucking bring just, it back. Yeah. 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 Just be like, no, that's not. Well, for it me, is. it's like I'm driving the band just with no click. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it gets a little wild sometimes, you know. And um, but bringing it back is the most important thing. Like if if something's going out, just trying to snap everybody back. Yeah. Into it, you know. So um, I yeah. actually really like how um, you and Carbomb like basically have these moments where you you kind of pull back and and like slow down and then like push certain things like, yeah yeah i don't know man it's fucking heavy like and i and you have the ability to do that because you're not tied to a click yeah you can really like no the retards and like pushing and all that stuff getting is all like retarded with it yeah yeah i mean it's just <laughs> like when you're slowing down you just want it to they yell at me sometimes for like getting too doomy or whatever you know on certain Parts, yeah, but I've heard. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. You talked to Greg. <laughs> yeah, and it's like actually, I, I think it's kind of fucking cool. I, I, I like it. I yeah, like yeah. It a lot. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the element of risk in there. You know what I mean? It's kind of. And then if yeah. I'm like pumped, 
on a night the tempos will be fucking like Greg will be screaming at me like slow the fuck down no you know because it becomes unplayable past a certain tempo or whatever. oh yeah yeah. That's one of the things about animals that, like, I, I really... There's some parts that are so at the threshold right. of tempo that, like, if we were to play without click and, and s speed up or be a right. little too fast, it would be like... Yeah, the 30 seconds, like, will turn into... <coughs> it'd I mean, be way too... Yeah. It'd be way too fucking fast. Yeah. And Tos Tosin likes to be on top. Right. He's very much, like, in front. Right. Um, and I'm kind of like either dead on or sometimes I'll, I'll lag a little bit behind um, but like most times I'm trying to be like um, right yeah. where the fucking click is yeah you yeah know, like sturdy fucking killer you know, <laughs> metal I don't know I feel like that's pretty metal yeah yeah, yeah. but I don't know I, I really like what you guys do I like um, what you do man it's like the, the perfect fusion of uh, like feel and technicality with you guys you know what I mean it's like Trying, so man. great to watch. And he's I'm like, trying to put some some feel in there, dude. You, even since their first album before you with the group, I was I was like, you know, it's like more modern fusion setting. You know, what I mean, because yeah, I grew yeah. up listening to like Maha and fucking Return to Forever and all that Same type of here. stuff. So it's like the next evolution of that. You know, that's what I, mean? what I thought too when I heard the first yeah. record. I was like, oh shit, like, is this fucking is this a Chapman stick? Because <laughs> yeah. it was it was tapping. On no, the, the eights with the tapping. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it sounded so much like a Chapman stick. No, just and the instrumentation is amazing too. It's just the way it, it's all laid out. It's totally unique. Yeah, and, yeah. A bunch of motherfuckers trying to do it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. they can't do it. Yeah, and I got lucky. I got I got that fucking dude. You hopped out of fucking Berkeley and right hop right Berkeley. in that bitch, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Score. Yeah, uh, at the time, like, it, it, there wasn't a lot of motherfuckers around that were, like, capable of, like, playing and holding that shit down, but, yeah. like, also being able to, I don't know. So you came from, bring something you, else you came from fusion into metal? Basically, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I was, like, I was, like, in punk bands and, like, some metal bands, uh, punk bands and when I was in high school and uh, I was playing double bass and right. learning double bass out of like books. I was, I was learning like Billy Cobb and type yeah, yeah. double bass, Dave Weckl, um, Vin Caliuda, that, that type of shit. Yeah. Yeah. And then like Not examples metal, in bass books, drum playing, it, but bass. it was kind of like out of the books was like yeah. kind of like that. It was like set up very much like that, like the encyclopedia of double bass drumming. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, also grew up, you know, in Western Mass, and uh, my dad owned a music store. A lot and, of metal out there. Yeah, well, Kill Switch, you know. All right. Um, and my dad ended up, uh, he, he was teaching Joel Stretzel um, oh, cool. guitar, and then uh, Joel ended up teaching there at my dad's store, and then Adam D and Joel met at my dad's store. Nice. And that's, I think, they're like, oh, you went to, you go to Berkeley? Oh, I go to Berkeley, too. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I they, come from a musical started. family, too. Like, both of my parents were musicians. They, they didn't do anything original, really. They were just playing club dates, mm -hmm. like, growing up in the, uh, in the 80s. So, um, you know, it was good that my father's killer bass player, and he plays keys and sings. But he, he could play, like, split keys with, like, left-hand bass and keyboard. So oh, when yeah, I first sick. picked up the drums... He would sit down with me and it'd be like a whole band because he would, you know, he would sing and play keys and bass all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, and then he would like give me pointers and shit, you know, or he would turn me on to stuff like, you know, like Stuart Copeland. He's like, listen to the way this guy plays the hi-hat or fucking, you know, shit like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, so that was kind of fun. And once, you know, I kind of got thrown into the whole metal thing, like my first band, you know, I was like. 11 or something like that and they're like you know this is Injustice for All this is Slayer this is Anthrax like learn how to play this so I just had to like put on headphones or blast my father had PA I just blast the PA in the garage like, mm -hmm. and try and play along with that stuff how old were you? yeah I was like at the first bands I was joining was like 11 oh wow yeah, yeah. and they were older Super guys good. they were like 16 17 year old guys and, yeah uh, and then I started playing gigs because they were you know it was like skater thrash shit you know mm -hmm. what I mean yeah, so that was like 89 or something. I'm 45. 
Yeah. And then I got a young start, so that was like I was there. I went from like thrash into like the whole death metal thing. But I, I once I started hearing more progressive metal, that kind of changed my whole outlook on everything. When like, was that? That was like early '90s, like '92, '91, '92. Um, yeah. There was this band from uh, North Carolina called Confessor, and mm -hmm. they changed my whole shit up. And then Cynic came out, and then yeah. the Sean Reiner, rest in peace, fucking. Yeah. On that record, he was like a fusion metal guy. Yeah. And he was like the first like true fusion metal guy that I heard where he was doing all the slick shit with the splashes and the ghost notes and mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Some open uh, hi hat with double bass shit too. He would do left left foot lead and then like you know play off the hi hat because it's playing eighth notes, but he was playing the double bass double bass stuff and then he would yeah. like fill in thirty second notes on the right foot while he was doing all that shit and playing you know killer killer yeah. shit yeah yeah very cool ideas yeah and that changed the whole heading for me and then like Primus and Mr. Bungle and all that weirder shit I started getting into Zappa and Holdsworth and yeah. I think Secrets was the first time I heard Vinny and that was like I just lived that album for like a year or oh, two yeah. yeah and then I went back and listened to all the Zappa stuff that he did it's just like yeah like those shut up and play your guitar records oh yeah it's like Bible Hog Heaven Oh, it's so many the five it all goes five 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 five, five yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and city nights the first time i heard city nights i was like what the fuck yeah. oh yeah it's so slick like you know oh yeah. yeah i love that shit and fucking just like max fluidity but like yeah. also like just sort of fucking still yeah driving. he's got that fire dude yeah it's like yeah. what sets Vinny apart like it's got that you know there's nothing yeah. sterile about it at all you know, yep. it's like always, always so hip, and he never plays the same thing twice, and it's always deep, and it's like, you know, yeah, yeah he's my man. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were geeking out in Europe together. I remember you were yeah showing me some tapes that like oh I've never and stuff. heard. Yeah, 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 some shit I ain't ever heard before. Yeah, anything you can get like my prime Vinny is probably like eighty seven to eighty nine when mm -hmm. he was just fucking chops fire like. Yeah. Unbelievable stuff. There's stuff on YouTube. That guy from House of Drumming, I forget his name, was posting shit in the early 90s. He had like a news group and mm -hmm. he would post all the Vinny clinics on there and you download them. Yeah. yeah. Right, right click. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now he wow. posted some like video clinics of him like around that era also. There's one in Long Island Drum Center, I think. It's like a three part. And it's just, it's just him soloing. He's like, yeah, it, it's like the most ridiculous. That's so sick. Yeah. But whatever, I can talk about Vinny for forever will you yeah. uh will you share with me <laughs> share <laughs> yeah we gotta have Vinny sit down again yeah, yeah. hell yeah. yeah we toured a bunch time. in Europe together a couple of years ago before the pandemic and that was fucking yeah I think the car bomb animals nexus really fucking works you know what I mean yeah yeah absolutely yeah just yeah. I think it's very complimentary it's like y'all are heavy as fuck and um you, you definitely make it so we're like, fuck, we gotta deliver the goddamn goods. Yeah, yeah. Like, having a serious opener. Push it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a totally different thing. Car I mean, Mom is like... By the time yeah. we get to them, their pants have already been shitted. Yeah. But, like, you know, we only hope to oh, do it, more of that. It's wor It works. Like, just the, the package <laughs> works. Yeah, for sure. It's a good drumming gig to check out. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. And guitars, but we, you know, Yeah, you know, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> just a bunch yeah. of, you know, so uh, the, soloing, you know. You get the solo. Soloing. I don't get the solo. I get eight bars, yeah. like max. I get, That's, I think it, I got, it's small. Yeah. It's small. You're fucking killing it, though. Yeah. I'm trying, man. I, I only have a short amount of time yeah, to, yeah. to... And usually it's like... I, I have statement. a very specific <laughs> phrase I have to play. It's not like, oh, here's eight bars to do what you like with. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, you're playing the dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum. <laughs> and it's like, well, i basically got to play to that. Yeah, yeah. And phrase all my shit around. That's a fun fucking vamp, though. Yeah, it is. Eep shit on that fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> Had a good time with that last night. Yeah. I like finally, second to last show of the tour, 
finally it's the two-week like, mark I, is when I it had clicks. A pretty, I had a pretty, like, perfect show, actually. It nice. Was like, yeah, it was, like, one of the first ones that I was, like, you know, that any mistake was, like, so small that it was, like, oh, I didn't play that bass drum. Yeah, yeah. You know. It wasn't an out-of-time note. It was just an omission of a note. Yeah. 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 I'm perfect gigs. I don't know. For me... There's always a couple of little flubs in there. You know what I, mean? I feel you, man. Yeah. It was, it was, it's been like that for me too, yeah. pretty much. Um, but I had less caffeine yesterday, and I feel like that was a <laughs> gigantic. Two of these a day. Is that a Trentas? That, yeah. How many? How many shots is actually in there? There's no shots. It's just iced coffee. Thirty ounces of iced coffee, though. Okay. I that's, went to this faux spot and got. Vietnamese coffee before too that got me all jacked up before this oh wow yeah so yeah. I'm good to go yeah, yeah I would say <laughs> I would say <laughs> it's too much for me man that that plus the adrenaline is like yeah my shit gets wild it's like damn I'm like tweaking yeah you know so no you get a little you know you get that vibration going on a little bit you know and then yeah, like, so like couple, <laughs> yeah a couple of tunes in you're kind of relaxes a little bit yeah. yeah but like even still like there's there's this crosstalk that I've been having that I've been trying to uh, rid myself of um, where I'm just like thinking and being like oh this part coming or like I don't know just not being fully immersed in just the music right and uh, it's like when you're playing this chatter, kind of music it's, it's like, like if you start thinking it's over you know? I can still pretty much execute though. That's yeah, yeah. The thing. It's but like, it's you like wouldn't the... know. I'm like, I'm like thinking about some other shit, and I'm executing, and it's pretty much perfect. Right. But like. But you're not thinking about it. It's just happening. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't really like that idea, like, yeah. of of like muscle memory. Even even though there's no such thing as muscle memory, folks, it's not. It, there's it doesn't live in your muscles actually. Right, right. Um, it's your brain. It's your brain. Yeah. So there is such things as muscle memory, but it actually has to do with like how rewiring how much, your brain for the coordination of the no mu real muscle memory is actually you build a certain amount of muscle, and then let's say you stop working out. Like I, I haven't been working out for like fucking Couple four weeks, weeks yeah, yeah. basically um, since we've been on tour, four or five weeks, something like that. And so whenever I go to work out again my muscles bring me, will remember how big they were and right. what they used to lift, but it's going to take like 30% of the time that it took me to, to gain that. So right. whatever I lost... It comes back faster. 30% amount, in yeah. the amount of time. Yeah. But that's your muscle memory, is your muscles remembering what they used to do and how big they were. And, right. But Not the execution of... Yeah, no, that's neurological. That's, yeah, yeah. that's your fucking brain. It's the coffee fucking fucks that all up I mean it gives you all the firepower yeah. you need for your like I write transfers. code for a living too so it's like if I'm going into a coding session like coffee is you know I'm just like I'll, I'll go in for 15-20 hours like damn yeah just try and bang it out the coffee is uh, it's, you should talk to Hob yeah. about that he's trying to learn coding yeah yeah he's like it's kind of his thing right now he's what, bro. what language yeah. are you it's like C plus. I do automation automation system programming. Yeah. C plus isn't that like the biggest one? The it's like low level programming, like driver programming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So driver. Like device control. So okay. ba basically, I I work for like I have my own company, but I work for like billionaires to fucking hook up their cribs. So all those systems are basically like it's all about making all of the gear talk to each other. So basically what you need to do is you need to write drivers for each piece of gear and, and tie it all together in codes, like logic-based stuff, you know, so. Yeah. It's cool when it all you works. Shut this shit off. Get the glow on. separate zone back here, right? Should be. So, uh, you don't feel like you're gonna shoot yourself in the head after coding for hours on end? No, no, I've been doing it a long time, so. 
Yeah. yeah. That that would drive me crazy. Yeah. I tried to learn C plus actually. And I was hey. going through the C plus for dummies book. Yeah, yeah. And I was using the the modulator or whatever or the simulator. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Not a not an easy thing to learn. I started like in early two thousands, like with the whole coding thing, like 2001, 2002, and uh, yeah, and I worked for companies doing it for a long time, and I kind of hit the, the threshold of what the companies could do for me, and I kind of broke off and started my own thing, yeah. and that's been sick, you know, it's like working for myself, also I can get out on the road more, because my clients are cool, you know, they, mm -hmm. they think it's cute that I'm a musician, you know, these rich people, yeah. like, go out and make music, yeah. So. Little do they know, it's like cum dumpster dirty <laughs> fucking metal. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> What's the name of your band? I'm like, you're not gonna like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, we don't need to talk about it. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I. I get the same thing talking to a lot of people about like they they start to ask and I'm like yeah yeah you're. Especially if they're female, not to be sexist, but like the majority of our fans are, are males, like 90 plus percent. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't mean a female is incapable of sure, liking sure. it, but it's just the likelihood is like super low. Yeah, yeah. Like women aren't listening to progressive metal. That's not, or progressive music or fusion. Like yeah. there's not a lot of women that I, like fusion is predominantly listened to by men. It's like all, pretty much all the styles that I listen to. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. I guess. Well, you meet them outside of music. Yeah. <laughs> I, maybe, you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's like a kind of more of like a luck thing. Yeah. I mean, it, it's totally for my own gratification, the music that I play. You know what I mean? So it's not. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. It has nothing to do with uh, being a rock star. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I feel you. I, I didn't get into this to well I, I did think like I, I want to be like good enough to make a living yeah, yeah. but I was really thinking like I want to be one of the baddest motherfuckers I want to be like like Vinny like yeah, look, yeah. like those moments that I saw like of Vinny playing the blue note with Chikoria yeah. or like you know at his clinic yeah. or some shit dude you're fucking top of the heap right now you know what I mean trying man yeah you're doing it for like I, I'm kind of jealous because I fucking kind of gave up on trying to make play drums for a living like a long time ago like I, I kind of had this thing in the back of my head my, my childhood probably fucked me up where I was like I watched my father playing club dates to make a living not playing any original music mm. and fucking not being happy about it you know what I mean so right. I was like I'd rather separate my money and my music you know yeah and in New York you know $150,000 a year is fucking like poverty level there oh yeah, yeah. it's fucking nuts it's insane yeah. man I don't know how you do it. Yeah. Oh, you just fucking got it. You got to be a specialist in something yeah. and be working. You know, yeah. that's like the only way. And starting your own business too. Like even there's totally a ceiling to being an employee and all that. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I kind of, luckily with Car Bomb, I've I've been friends with these guys for since you know early nineties. You know, yeah. Nineties. Playing Spooge. Yeah. Me and Anybody Johnny. Know? Yeah. Yeah. You and yeah. Johnny. If you never heard Spooge, that's kind of like. Uh, it's very Zappa, Mr. Oh, Bumble. You gotta, Total, you gotta go yeah. seek it out. It's Total. on, it's on YouTube, right? I posted a couple like on my YouTube channel. You can check them out on there. But there's Bandcamp stuff too. I saw Johnny looked at Johnny up the uploaded other night. some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I gotta get those links because I, I don't know that I've heard all that stuff. Yeah, there's like some shit, the, dude. Yeah, it's like, like Bill Cosby team. Yeah. Like, I was, a, I was like, it was amazing band because it would be like the stuff that I was shedding would be the song that we'd be writing. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. So it was immediately yeah, I mean that's the immediately incorporated. Way to do it. Yeah. So it was yeah, like yeah. these like seven minute long epic, you know, multi movement style type stuff. It was fucking really fulfilling to play, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's there's something like just magical about investing entirely into like a project. I am kind of that way where I, I can't like work on a million things at once. Yeah. I, I, it, it, I just don't work that way and like I don't know if someone were like yeah I've got this like odd time thing and it should be easy for you and you'll just show up to the studio and f for like a day or two and it's like I, I don't want that I, I would rather take my time with something and like 
yeah. crafts and shit. There's nothing like working on it. And, and you write by yourself at home mostly, off. or um, and then bounce back and forth. Uh, with animals, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, nah, we're we're in a session together. Nice. We're in a session together. Yeah. So like, I don't know. Yeah, a lot of times it starts with Tosin having like a few riffs, and right. then you know me and Hop build off that. Um, That's the way to do it. And yeah, but some sometimes there's usually there's one song that like I compose all the uh, rhythms for on on the album. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's like little riffs. New too. album is it's fucking little... next level, fucking killing. Thank it's you. Like, yeah, really beautiful fucking record. Yeah. Thanks. Rocking that shit in the woods. It's a, definitely yeah. a team effort, like between the three of us, with uh, Misha helping too, and then. Outside um, ear is always good. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. The production too, um, Nick Morzov and Hav mixing it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we took the, we tried to mix our first two records ourselves, and that was no good. So. It's tough, man. When that meta, right, meta, we sent it out for the first time for somebody else to mix it. That guy, Josh Wilbur, mm -hmm. and he sent back the test mixes. I was like. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. It gets difficult because, like, you know, you all have biases. And yeah. um, you have to be very aware of those biases yeah. and, like, curb them. Otherwise, you know, the guitar player ends up, you know, he's mixing it. It just ends up being, like, super guitar dominant. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, Bro, do you not hear this? You know? Right. Um, Where are my ghost notes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. Yeah. You have, now you're going to have to do a thousand automation moves to get my fucking ghost notes to pop. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you do that because you want your guitars loud. You know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you speak from experience. It's ours. Yes. I've been through this. Yeah. Yeah. With, with car bomb, it's... it's I'm like... It gets us a little close. I like... With, sure. with the car bomb thing, it's like... We're going for a sound, you know what I mean? So I can't really do my fusion thing in there. I can kind of, it, it's very, it's basically like fusion, but leaving out a lot of shit, you know what I mean? So yeah. the rhythmic ideas Anything are- that's too delicate yeah. or like, yeah. It's very, it's very, the rhythmic ideas are very fusion-y, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Yeah, but- um, Some of those fills too, like, like some of the fucking rolls that you're the way that you're playing them and, and coming out of them yeah it's like it's just like yeah that like five tuplets broken like in doubles like around the toms with like you know just weird play single kicks in there and you know kind yeah of, and then you come out of it it's like what just happened you know yeah I love those I like that <laughs> <laughs> I fuck with that yeah like I'll I, I'll sit down and put on a click and just play fives like just improvise in fives as a oh, great yeah. you know I love fives yeah, yeah. quintuplets yeah. by the way is what we're yeah yeah not sixteenth notes we're talking five fives we're yeah talking, yeah yeah not talking groupings of five yeah and then you could do the same things you know obviously the car bomb does a lot of rate shifting so it's like that's that's like one of our big tricks is like you know just take the same riff or whatever and just shift the rate yeah, yeah. But, you guys got a fuck ton yeah. on quintuplet shit. All the quintuplet shit for me hits so hard. It's like, because I can feel it in quintuplets, and I'm yeah. like, oh yeah. Yeah, Quint quintuplets are like sixteenth notes to me now, like in my brain. Yeah, you know? bro. Yeah, we, if you can make quintuplets the new sixteenth notes, then there's uh, also a cool idea that you have on and, and lights out, where yeah. like you basically you take the same riff and you're playing. Um, like every sixth note, you're treating it as if it's sex, the riff as if it's sex tuplets. And the rate stays the same, and then you play it every fifth note as if it's in quintuplets. Right. And then every fourth, we call third, that, and it like, yeah. it's like scaling. We call that like uh, upshifting and downshifting. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. like, let's change the rate of, or the groupings. So that's all, Lights Out is all 16th note based, but it's, uh, yeah. you know, you're just expanding and shrinking the, the groupings. And try and keep it like in the same. You just yeah. You just work on it until it sounds heavy as fuck. But when you, know you know first I mean? hear yeah. it and you don't understand that, you're like, "What the fuck?" It, yeah. It, it sounds like yeah. it sounds like it's speeding up. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like an engine. Yeah. You're you're in a fucking engine. Yeah. Like that's fucking shifting gears. Yeah. It's literally. And the carbon so stuff cool. too. Like I'll I'll start like 
I'll have an idea and then I'll um, I'll basically like put it over fives or or say it's like a more straight thing and then I'll mm-hmm. I'll just try different groupings over it. Yeah. And then I'll try and and it never starts from the four four groove. It always starts from like the fucked up shit. The fucked up shit and then gets more fucked up. And then maybe we'll play it straight once. Yeah. Like later just to fuck with somebody and then I actually yeah. like that. I I like that. Um we do that sometimes too. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like, you know, instead of being like, okay, the traditional thought is like, okay, we're going to build off something. Yeah, let's we'll, let them. We'll give it to them yeah. very straight and then we'll kind of build off it so that they're yeah. with us the entire time. But there's something. That's some, um, some boomer about. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's something yeah. like very unique about like just slapping them in the face with some. No, start way out. Shit. Yeah. 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 And then maybe at one point Rain it in a little bit yeah, yeah, yeah And then they're like Oh, I see what the, all the other shit was Yeah, yeah Like it's a, it's a conundrum too For us too Because I'm I'm like super weird And I want to go as far Rhythmically whacked out As mm-hmm. possible And then Greg is like Standing in front of the audience He's not sitting behind a drum set So he's like Wants some some stuff That people can enjoy Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like fucking he what? says like once the song like he tries to give him that fucking a little something thing a little that he can something, hold something. on to. Yeah. But We're in the back of a bus, by the way. I've commandeered this room. <laughs> People keep trying to walk in. It's the podcast like, room. Nope. You can call him out there. Yeah, I could mess with him on the radios. <laughs> yeah, this is real life, uh, real tour life. We we have a bus, which is sick. Um, We're in a bandwagon. Y'all are in a bandwagon, which is less sick. Yeah. Because there's no hydraulics, which means that it feels... Sleeping, yeah, sleeping while you're moving is uh, It's is a way rough. more rough. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just in general, like, even still here, like, moving, like, yeah. while you're sleeping. Like, we split don't realize, buses in Europe It's like someone's a shaking times. your bed <laughs> yeah. when you're trying to fucking sleep. Yeah, it's like, yo, wake the fuck up. Yeah. 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 Except... Yeah, we were driving across BC there. I was fucking in. I was. I thought I was gonna die. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, are we gonna make it <laughs> in the mountains or some yeah, shit? Yeah. 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 yeah between uh, Calgary and uh, Vancouver, that drive. Yeah. yeah, we've had some fucked up shit happen on buses. We had a once in Europe. W- were you with us? Yeah, when they caught no. fire. Yes. Yeah, we ended up on the fucking road at like six in the morning in yes. Germany somewhere. And we're walking miles down the highway. To yeah. fucking some Burger King. Yes, something. to some the gas closest place. To, yeah, <laughs> to try to get some food and to just fucking chill for hours before. Yeah. Whatever. No, band we, we, showed I up. was there for that. Yeah, that was classic. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah, and that you know, I'm almost glad that thing caught fire because there's also that bathroom. It just smelled like chemicals. It was piss. Yeah. It was fermented piss. It, it just like yeah. and it got real bad. Yeah. Like. And the driver was like, oh, you know, oh, this is normal. It's like, dude, we can smell it upstairs. Yeah. Over in Europe, they have double-decker buses. That's yeah. how they fucking So we can split. Yeah. yeah. It's much more economically uh, viable for if the two bands can split a bus and both fit on it. You know what I mean? That we yeah. Don't. So that's that's awesome over there. We tried to rent a bus on that last run we did in the uh, winter with um, between the Baird and me. And mm-hmm. it was like, that was our first time renting a bus in the U.S., it was a money pit, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, they fuck you hard. Yeah, real bad. Yeah, we're we're trying to figure out something, man. We're like, how much would it be to buy a bus? We were looking up prices last night, yeah. and it's like, oh my god, it's so expensive. It's expensive. And then it's like, well, here's one that's cheap, and it's like, yeah, but that's a 2004. Yeah, And yeah. we're in a 2008, and yeah. this shit is like not falling apart. Already, yeah, yeah, it's 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 not the best. Like 14, I think is the latest. You can go yeah, yeah. before you're running some risks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, but being on the road is nice. Short, short I, like this is a two week run for us with you. Yeah. And that's perfect for us because we're all like working guys. Yeah. You know, fucking Mikey's in the bus. On. I feel like that's yeah. the perfect level. Like, there's no two week tour that I've been on where I'm like, oh, this fucking, this is br-. like maybe Australia or like J- uh, Japan, Australia, where you're you're literally flying. Yeah, every that's day. travel centric though. Two yeah, weeks. Yeah, you literally get up at six a.m., four a.m. every day. Yeah. To 
get a seven o'clock flight or eight o'clock flight yeah. to fly to the next venue. To I've never been to Australia or Japan. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah, Japan that, is that's going to happen for us, like, hopefully in the next uh, next album cycle or whatever. Oh, dude. Yeah. Going into track. I mean, if soon, we can so. bring you, we'll fucking do it. Dude, it's all, you know, anything's possible. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be sick. Oh, yeah. Australia's nice. It's like, you know, you don't have to worry about a language barrier. They got, yeah. like, American breakfast, but it's low key. It's a little better. Yeah, yeah. They got great coffee. Beautiful weather. Everybody's nice. Yeah. Crowds are crazy. They're like. Dude, I've, they people, also like to drink too. So yeah, yeah. Like, you know, people like uh, have been being like, come to Australia for fucking, you know, ten years for us, or you know, it's like. Yeah. They're like, oh, we're planning on it. We're planning on it. You know, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Luckily for us, like our whole thing has been like people in bigger bands have liked us and been fans of the music and have taken us out with yeah. them. Yeah. You know? Well, Whether that's how it happened with the Animals, too. Their, totally. their first tour, before I was even in the band, it was like somebody had heard the project and was like, you know, I think it was um, uh, why am I blanking on the name? Uh, Took out Animals as support? Yeah. 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 Uh, More metal stuff, though, right? We're taking them out. Oh, what band? You don't remember what band oh, it was? Man, I'm blanking. Oh, this is terrible. Yeah. You but weren't. Anyways, you weren't in the band at the point. Yeah, though. I was, yeah, I wasn't in the band at the time. But then, it, yeah, it was. Um, Between so, you guys and Gojira and Mashuga, we've toured. That's the world. like that's a honor, dude. And that's to, like, to have to have like that roster of people that are like and it's like the bands that I love is awesome yeah. yeah and then it turns out that they love our shit too and it's yeah. like it's so sick yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 you gotta be thankful for that you yeah be... hanging out with Hawk and shit in New York like playing he came over to my jam room we fucking play drums together for a little while and when he's oh, in yeah. New York we go out and grab food and chill and shit oh, yeah. yeah it's been nuts yeah cause I'm like old school Meshuggah fan like you know Nun, e Nun EP when that dropped I was like yes it was like the perfect mix of like technical thrash you know yeah before they went you know and then they went to the sevens like Chaos Fear was like you know Destroy Race Approved and Chaos Fear were like yeah crazy dude yeah. I came in on Catch 33 yeah yeah and then nothing when they went lower yeah, yeah. and Catch 33 is fucking yeah. Got some amazing shit on it. I, I mean, I, I dug back into the catalog, but like yeah. the the when I was in high school, there was this kid, metal kid, and he was like, yeah. The Mashuga ambassador. He basically yeah. was like, yo, here's all. He was just the metal guy. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I know all the fucking metal, but he's like, he here's a fucking napalm. I would dub Mashuga tapes and give them to people and be like, dude, do yourself a favor and fucking. Yeah, I gave Greg a cassette when he was in the other band before I ever played with him. I was like, dude, fucking worship this and you'll yes. be alright yeah. yeah yeah. he gave me a fuck ton of bands he yeah. gave me like fucking 20 yeah yeah but the one that was my favorite out of all of them was Meshuggah I was like this shit is on another level it's fusion like, it's just heavy fusion you know what I mean and yeah, they got yeah. their own fucking thing happening it's fucking yeah so groovy it, yeah coming out of that 90s so groove metal fucking, thing like they were the only band doing groove metal that was all odd, odd. yeah you know what I mean with all the fucking uh, hard as fuck to play those riffs and to hear over that long period of time over 32 bars yeah yeah long cycles yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and like it's I remember being in the shower yeah. like counting like trying to be like you know instead yeah. of just hearing the odd loop or whatever like hearing it over 4-4 four, four. yeah and hearing when it was going to resolve it was like it was a thing I had to no it's all like, it's their thing yeah for sure yeah yeah. Like, we do some cyclic stuff, but it's not long like that. We'll, we'll chop it up, you know. Oh, yeah. And it's all in mix meter and stuff. And, but yeah. uh, that's, like, their, their fucking staple. And it's, like, mm -hmm. so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so satisfying. Yeah, their new like, album Especially live, killing. man. Yeah. They fucking I just saw them, live. like, in New York a couple weeks ago, and I was... I was, like, on a pole, like, body banging. I couldn't walk for, like, two days because I was just, like, overdid it. You know? Yeah, I, it's like one of the when I see them play, it's like joy, 
you know? Yeah, pure feeling. Spiritual fucking experience, you know? Yeah, it does yeah. feel spiritual. It's, it's like, damn, these guys yeah. are Norse gods. Yeah. That, that has to be what's going on. They're like, they've internalized or like they're represented. And Frederick was back with him again. I got to fucking hang out with him a little oh, bit and see him. Sick. Yeah, he's like yeah. the nicest guy. Yeah. yeah. So it's fucking sick. You two were with them a bunch too, right? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. three times. Me and Hawk said we were going to, uh, like break my legs slit your throat and put you in a trunk Jesus because you're too good <laughs> see that's why I gotta yeah, yeah. I gotta stay muscular stay yeah, fucking yeah. You gotta strapped defend, you gotta defend yourself <laughs> yeah. yeah well very flattering I appreciate the threat in my life yeah yeah I actually do yeah yeah it's, yeah it's with love yeah love murder yeah I appreciate that <laughs> so what else? So uh, uh, Spooge, we covered Spooge. They're gonna, all these cats are gonna look up Spooge. Yeah, Spooge. That's yeah, crazy shit. And then uh, me, the other guys were in a band in Long Island, New York, called Neck. And both of those bands broke up. I I broke up Spooge pretty much because I I turned like I saw I was listening to like too much Coltrane and fucking was like. Sniffing dope and shit, you know. So I ended, I ended up in rehab when I was like twenty or something, you know. Yeah. And I, every, and I stopped playing for a couple of years because I was just, I was all whacked out on That's drugs. That's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So that that missing gap from like, like ninety nine to like two thousand, well ninety eight to like two thousand two, when I got back in car bomb or whatever, I had to just like clean up my act and shit, you know. Yeah. That's um, a shame too because I was like on fire and you know and that kind of like put a little hiatus on, on everything for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I came out the other side and, you know, I Yeah, I mean, maybe it was a, a, a facet of, like, your greatness that you were more likely to get involved with that shit. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, you know... Like your free spirit. All the heavy cats are, you know... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> all the heavy cats are doing it. <laughs> no, well, but... There's I, I nothing glorious about it, but it was like you I know. think I think it's working out for you. I, I think yeah, yeah. Now you I mean it's you been have that experience twenty years to, off of that shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. so like you obviously have learned from it. Yeah. And, a lot of yeah. I started early. Like like I said, I joined bands at eleven, and I was hanging out with guys who were like full on, you know, partying already, and that yeah. just hopped right into that. So I got like an early start. Yeah. On uh, on being a delinquent delinquent yeah, yeah for sure I know how that yeah. is yeah. I had some friends like that yeah. in high school playing death metal yeah not not that just yeah. you know, <laughs> just smoked weed that's yeah, yeah. that's pretty that's like I smoked weed that, all that was... day every day for like many years yeah yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, nah I can't do that it turns into a video game yeah I take one hit of weed <laughs> I'm like in a fucking video game yeah. forget that yeah. yeah that's how it works yeah if you're not conditioned um it hits different. I think the biology, my bot, like my brain chemistry changed maybe too because it's like, I don't this know. This is something that a lot of people, I've had the same experience You can smoke too, for 10 years like, then all of a sudden you start getting paranoid attacks and shit like that. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like there's a, I, I have a theory that there's only so much that you can do like where you get that laughiness and right. that like giggliness and silliness and then all of a sudden it's just like it becomes a habit and it becomes like your baseline and like you don't get the same right and then you try to go back and like no you, like you get paranoid about being real life. blazed as your baseline is not is not a good way to live like just for overall yeah wellness. i know people that do yeah. it and that it was can. me for years yeah you know? yeah yeah the big motivation sucker and uh, like uh you know i know people that can still function and do it but you know just the headspace is not not where i want to be at you know what i mean so yeah for sure it kind of puts blindness on too. Like I, mean, I, I get like being high and playing music, but like outside of music, it's like there's so many other things as an adult that yeah. you gotta do. You gotta show up, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And be like yeah. attentive. <laughs> yeah. It's like I, I, maybe worse. at night, you know, yeah. when when no, I've gone through that's different. I'm just saying, like you know, Stone Bro, that you expect to be doing a job. You know, it's like what the fuck. You know, why am I paying you when you you know I gotta like explain myself over and over and over again? Like, 
you're out. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> I get to fire people now, so that's fun. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, not really. <laughs> Depending on their behavior. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's justified. Sometimes it's like a slow burn. Yeah. But. So um, let's talk about your setup a bit too. Um, you got double chinas going on right now. Wall, yeah, it wall seems to be the, the metal thing yeah. all the kids are doing. Yeah, so my things. my kid is basically Dave Weckl's kid with slightly bigger floor toms and a second kick. Like that. You got 8, 10. 8, 10, 15, 18. Yeah, so super fucking punchy. Like, um, yeah, they do kind of sound like Dave Weckl's toms. Yeah, like they just fucking, cut right through everything. Yeah. And they're like, you know, that. But then yeah. you got the beef down below. Yeah, yeah. With the heavy shit, you, and you like slam it on the floors, like it's got to be the shoom yeah. thing, you know? So the 18, I used to do, I, I started with the 8, 10, 13, 15, and then I got rid of the 13, and I put the 15, and I got an 18. Yeah. And that's, and my single, my cymbals have getting been getting bigger, like over the years also. I used to have, love like 15, 17 inch crashes. Yeah. And uh, now I've got a, you know, I think now 17. 2019 inch crashes. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, you had a little splash too. Is that a couple of splashes. That inch? Al uh, 11 inch uh, Oriental, kind of like trashy splash. I like splash. that one a lot. Yeah. And then I got a K 12 inch with a 8 inch ice bell on top of, or it's a L LP bell, like an old one I had from a long time ago. It's kind of like mm -hmm. dead. Yeah. Bell. And I got a old 15 inch, like uh, 1970s A. Uh, High hats that I just love for some reason. They just like. I, I thought I thought they were 14s, man. Damn. Big big suckers. Yeah. Yeah, and then I got a pair of 10 inch special recording hats on the left, and a pair of 13 inch KZs on the right. It's super loud, and that yep. stack. I used to. It just pretty much stays closed, right? All of them are open. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, I I. There are some sections in songs like over the years where I've had close hat on the left to do more like uh, right symbol, you know, stuff where I, I need to be close with double bass stuff. And uh, we're not playing any of those tunes on this on this run though. So, and I got that ten inch popcorn snare that uh, Peter Erskine ten inch maple oh, yeah, Yamaha yeah. snare. And that guy, um, I use that a lot more in older tunes where, like before before I started using a trigger in car bomb. Mm -hmm. There was a lot more dynamic sections, like on the first two rec or first record, really, because yeah. the, the second record we started using the triggers. Mm. But that first record, we'd take it down and fucking, you know, get a little, get a little weird, fucking jazz odyssey or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and do like, you know, low level breakbeat shit or hot meter breakbeat stuff. And, but um, now I just have it because the the laser song. Because I do that one section where it's like, blah, 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 Yeah. Yeah. Going back and forth between those. Blasting. Yeah. Yeah. So that's If you don't know the ways of song, it, it, it. Dissect yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's because Greg goes, pew, 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 pew. It literally sounds like a fucking laser. Yeah, yeah. There's some sick shit he's doing with all his sounds. He's like an effects master. Like, when I, even back in the day, like, he's always been, like, ahead of the curve with the effects stuff. Yeah. And, you know, he, he's not a shredder you know like but he's his shredding is in the effects you know what I mean mm -hmm. so but he's getting more in, into the you know he can't like he's always beating himself up hanging out with Hav and fucking Tosin he's like fucking shit you know what I mean because he doesn't he's not a like a, a shredder shredder but he's uh he's amazing yeah yeah with, I, I love his unique style and he's got a it's... like great understanding of rhythm also he does, yeah. yeah, and that's from playing with me for a long time. I but, would say, yeah, but he wants he wants that. <laughs> so, but whatever. So, and he's he's a great writer and programmer too. Like he's way more OCD than I am. So he'll he'll go through like 50, 60 variations of a riff, you know, like in his play. He's got his his coding set up is like at his music desk. Mm -hmm. So while he's working all day, he's writing, like back and forth. So he's like spending way more time writing than me that's for sure yeah me I have to like try and make time and all that type of stuff mm -hmm. after the girl goes to bed I'll try and go in the studio for a couple of hours or whatever what's your writing yeah. process like whenever you're whenever you're like okay I'm gonna go write a lot of times what I'll do is I'll sit on the V kit 
and just play into the computer with no click or anything. And, yeah. then, and then I'll go and I'll start chopping out the MIDI and loop, setting loop regions mm -hmm. until I get something that kind of like feels super weird. And then I'll kind of program against that or I'll take that idea and then try and play some more using that idea or something related to it. And then I'll just right. put chugs over it and send it to Greg. Yeah. yeah. And then he, he kind of spices up all the guitar stuff on it. Yeah, so it's it's not from a place of like concept where you're like, oh, I'm thinking about you utilizing this concept. And then you're Every like, once in a while, I'll it sit is. down and then. Yeah, if I'm like sitting on the can or something and I'm fucking tapping out some ideas, I'll like pull out the iPhone and. Okay, know, but most I, times it's it's you're behind the kit and you're like just like. Yeah. You start playing around yeah, with yeah. ideas in real time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like I I sit down. I don't have a routine or anything. I just go start going for stuff. You know. Yeah, it's like, and sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's not very good. But yeah, you know, it's the try and because as soon as you sit down, that's when the the idea just plops out. Yeah, as opposed to warming up for an hour and then the idea plop. Out. I mean, the execution and the flow for me. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, the thing is when yeah, whenever you're starting to warm up and you're doing all that, you're conditioning your brain to be in a certain to go down certain paths whereas uh, this is something I started experimenting with because I realized like oh whenever I'm going to play like I'm, I'm in these all these boxes of creative for myself like I've got these fucking rough boxes flam boxes fucking um, tom bo uh, gospel chop boxes I've got the, the kick and snare uh, odd pattern boxes right. I've got this uh, triplet uh, odd stuff but in triplets but like all these fucking different things that I've been working on constantly and I was like I've got to I've got to open my mind and to do that I just need to stop having a fucking plan because um, you know I could like if if I only go with what I know right now yeah and and continue to do that every single day i'm gonna end up it's all improvising dude like for me like with car bomb i don't get to improvise that much which is you know kind of a bummer because i, I love improvising mm -hmm. and when i am improvising all the time the flow of ideas you get out of the boxes but when you don't yeah. play for a little bit you know what i mean it's kind of like you go back to the sos things you know thing and then it slowly starts to open up again yeah. and flow out you know so it's definitely takes me a while of just sometimes coming back after not like improvising for a while like some getting off of tour yeah it's yeah. like I haven't been able to just sit down and fuck around yeah that's um, when magic magic yeah, happen, yeah yeah literally um and sometimes like hearing something for the first time and playing it to yeah to it for the first time I played the like watching time. you for a couple of weeks like I'll probably go home and I'll be like do something an idea that I see you executing every night but it won't be the same I'm not like you know I want to figure out what every note is but that the vibe of the lick or of yeah. the groove you know and try the and come essence. up with like yeah. yeah the essence of of the rhythm and the feel and all that type of stuff yeah try and you know that more of like a, not a big picture guy you know what I mean at this point like as far as like what I'm going for and then once you get an idea then you have to like hone in on it and fucking develop it and all that type of stuff I, I like yeah. practicing that way where it's like more like I'm improvising and then I find yeah. something that I'm like oh what a, uh, let me work on that like let me fucking yeah. cra start to craft that and then like I just start obsessing over it naturally yeah yeah where it's like day after day I'm like no I want to I want to go back to that and and right. see how, how is it coming now okay what what else could I do with it now and like just constantly you know my like favorite building off of that my favorite improv thing is I have I have a Cubase session that's fucking open with uh, I just have like 16 bars of um, eighth note triplet chugs it's like jump 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 I was I'll play over that for an hour yeah and just because eighth note triplets like you can approach, you know, you can hit them from all different angles and fucking modulate like across. That's like the early Mashuga thing, you know. Mm. But if you like take a really improvisational kind of like Vinny approach to it, yeah, 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 you could just pull it apart. That fucking that's like it makes me. That's you should try. This that. sounds fun. Yeah, yeah. You should. I'll send you the the wave. You just loop the wave. Go go 
go crazy. Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> I fuck with that. Good times. Yeah. <clears throat> right now I'm trying to like get a bunch of fives and sevens into like dotted spaces and triplet spaces. Like, cramming. Cramming, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really it's stuffed in there. Yeah. But like what I'm realizing you too, have to shred like, the fuck out of that to a click to like get it to work. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Yeah. But there's a feel to it too. When uh, I, I'm totally. only doing yeah. singles with it right now because yeah. uh, I've done usually in the past I would be like okay these fives and sevens I'm gonna have certain sticking that's gonna help me. Now it's like no sticking just like straight up fucking yeah you know threes fives and sevens basically so it's always alternating so I kind of nice. you can it's more so that if you're you know a little bit behind it's easier to catch up or yeah whatever. yeah I don't know. It's it, it's a feel thing, and it's I'm just trying to get a, a hold of that. But like, yeah, fucking around with that is a lot of fun. Yeah, that shit can get deep like real quick. Yeah, yeah. 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 It it it's just like another color. It's like I'm I, really I fall back to like a lot of uh, a lot of the stickings that I learned. You know what I mean? I know that if I'm just play a single and then three doubles, I'm in sevens. I could just do this and know that I'm. You know, playing sevens and yeah. put, the, put those across the toms or whatever, and and know that it's gonna work or whatever. But once you start doing, you know, you have to shed the mix sticking stuff or singles. You know, yeah, fives yeah. and sevens in doubles with weird accents. Like try and pull out the second notes of the doubles, but in those rates, you can get like weird, weird shit happening with those. Mm. That, it, yeah, and it's the type of thing that you improvise. Like I said before, I was I just improvise at in different rates with different stickings, different accents, and see what kind of st sticks, you know, or it yeah. would sound musical, you know, and not just garbage, you know. Yeah. So it's a fine line between musical and not musical. Yeah, and not yeah. quite executing and being like. Yeah, yeah. Fudging. Where am I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As I get older, I start fudging more, you know, and like. But, uh, I think there's yeah. there's value in that like ha always coming from a place of knowing like oh I'm working with dotted and I'm putting five and, and like knowing exactly the placement and yeah. grid it's like a vibe thing too like especially aside from the studio like live you know it's like it's all vibe thing you know what I mean like yeah it's if it's sterile it's it's not you know it, it's got to be like on fire and then if the whole band is on fire then the audience is fucking gets that and it's like everybody just wants to fucking crush you know yeah and everybody's having a good time and if you fucking flub a five or whatever you know gives a shit you know yeah yeah because everybody everybody had a good time you know yeah who is out in the audience counting yeah. fives yeah some bro but whatever one guy yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's probably more of them at, at our show than the norm. Yeah, well, a lot of the drummers who are fucking total technicians that I know that come out and check out gigs, they're just like, you know, they don't care if I fuck up. They think it's funny. Yeah. 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 Laughing at my ass or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Fooled them again. That's my motto. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but... Well, you're definitely yeah. fooling me. <laughs> See, if I can fool you, then uh, I'm doing something right. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well damn man thank you for Dude. testing um, amazing show Elliot some love uh, check out Car Bomb go see him live um, yeah we'll be touring you, again next year you got, or you got a you got an Instagram yeah so it's my name you Elliot Hoffman YouTube. I got a YouTuber yeah. I got a bunch of Car Bomb live shit up on there I, I'm like kind of light on the media stuff, you know what I mean? Because I just, when my drum set is set up, it's set up live, really. You know, yeah. that's the only time I have the shit all set up with all the mics on it. So it's like, that's when I'm getting getting the video or whatever. I would love to do some like playthroughs in the studio, but it's like, it's not fun to watch me in the studio because it's like eight bars at a time, you know what I mean? Mm. So I would have to like go back and set all my shit up and then do full playthroughs of the songs in the studio. After Which I effect. totally think you should do. I'm, I'm going to try and do something on the next round. Yeah. I think you should. Yeah. Even I go if I go back and play some old tunes, you know. Yeah. Hell yeah. Because there's some there's some heavy shit like on those first two records that. Yes. Kind of totally didn't nobody, 
you know. Nobody realized it yeah. happened. Yeah, it happened. Yeah. It yeah. happened though. <laughs> so like, yeah, dude, I totally think you should do that. I was, yeah. I was telling you that the other day. Yeah, I was yeah. like, man, you need to. Fucking well, I'm fucking watch your shit is like all 4K and beautiful. And dude, you porn. can also yeah. you can also just like fucking blow over some shit too, where you're like, okay, I'm gonna play these four songs over the next day yeah, or yeah. two or record them. But I'm also gonna yeah. I've got this fucking I feel bad your like, triplet sample. Like it, it, me as an educator, you know, I don't really look at myself as an educator. I kind of just look at myself as like. Uh, a player who like likes to hang out with drummers and talk drums, you know, more than coming up with uh, you. You're killing it with. I mean, you have so much fucking information out there. It's like nuts. Yeah. You know what I mean? So congratulations on that. Cause oh, I, thank you. Yeah, I fucking. I'm like not there at all. Like not everybody yeah. has to be. Yeah, yeah. And it's like I don't know. It's like, hey, you want to do clinics? I'm like, what the fuck am I gonna talk about at a clinic? I'm just gonna sit down and fucking play. You know, yeah. and that's it. You know. Yeah, and you're gonna talk about some. Wild, yeah, some concept uh, shit or whatever, but it's yeah. all that info is out there, and there's cats who, who will teach it better than I can, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, it is good to have your unique perspective, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, keep, but, it to my, keep it to my damn self, no. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, you keep a little something for yourself. Amazing, dude, but, thanks so much. Yeah, yeah, you're the king, thank you, Elliot, my man. <laughs> <laughs> More coffee. <laughs>